We're going to make a chart together. It's going to be kind of messy, but let's go ahead and do it together so you can actually write it down in your notes. We're going to look at the different parts of a neuron, a nerve cell, and here I've got the cell body or the dendrite. And the event that happens there, and I already told you, was graded, graded potentials. Graded potentials happen there. What it does, mm, uh, it conveys info to the cell body. Okay, we're gonna do that. And how does it do it? It does it by these proteins called ligand gated channels. We haven't talked about them yet, but we will. All right, next part of a neuron, the axon. And in the axon, the protein we will be talking about most importantly are voltage gated channels. Sorry, voltage, voltage gated channels. Hmm. Is there a way for me to, there we go, voltage gated channels. And what do they cause? They cause action potentials. And what does it does? Uh, sends info to the axon terminus, right? And then we have got entire neuron, the entire neuron. And in the entire neuron, we have got uh, sodium, Potassium pumps. Sodium potassium pumps are also known as uh, sodium potassium ATPase. We've got sodium potassium pumps and we've got potassium leakage channels. Those are the kinds of proteins we have there. And what event does this cause? This causes the resting membrane potential. Okay, and what does that do? Um, it makes the neuron excitable. Okay, I'm going to just say that, right? Now, here's one thing that I want you to pay attention to. The reason that, the reason that action potentials happen the reason that action potentials happen in the axon is because that is where these proteins are found. You need those proteins to create this thing called an action potential. The action potential only happens in the axon. The action potential only happens in the axon. And since the action potential only happens in the axon, that is the only place where you will find these voltage-gated channels. Same thing with graded potentials. Graded potentials happen here. Since this is the only place where I will find graded potentials, this is the only place where I will find the ligand-gated channels. Or I could say it the other way around. Since I will only find ligand-gated channels here, I can only get a graded potential there. Right? It's kind of like if I had a refrigerator in a, one room and I had an oven in the other room, I can only refrigerate things in the room where the refrigerator is and I can only cook things in the room where the oven is. This would be like the oven and the oven is only found here. This is cooking, so I can only cook here because I can only cook where the oven is. And so, you get me, All right? Now, what about this? The entire neuron has got these proteins. It's two different proteins, sodium potassium pumps and potassium leakage channels. And those guys are responsible for making the whole neuron excitable. That excitable quality is used so that these things can happen. And um, since these things happen all over the cell, the resting membrane potential is set up all over the cell, so these proteins are found all over the cell. Oh man, there was something else I was gonna do. Okay, maybe we'll come back to this and add a little bit to this particular um, slide, maybe. All right, 
Now, we are going to start with the action potential. Do we have to? No. We could start anywhere. Okay? We could start with graded potentials. We could start with the exocytosis of neurotransmitters. We could start anywhere. Here's where we're going to start. We're going to start with action potentials. Now, all of the cells in your body, I already told you, are, have got an unequal, unequal distribution of ions so that all the cells of the body have got more positively charged ions than they should on the outside and more negatively charged ions than they should on the inside. Now, sorry. Now, the way I remember this is I think about this sad clown, okay? He's not an evil clown, he's just sad. Um, and see how his face is painted in a smile, but inside he's sad, okay? So I think of ourselves as being negative on the inside. Great, right? Now, one of the things that confused the heck, first of all, this whole thing was confusing to me for the longest time. So I feel for you as you're learning it, okay? Now, one of the things that confused me was this. That confused me. Why? Because neither one of those things is negatively charged. And so you'll see this kind of diagram all the time in neurophysiology textbooks. And the reason it's there is because it's true. Okay, but it does not explain the unequal distribution of charge, right? So it, in this story of, of an action potential and all of this stuff, we will only be talking about moving sodium or moving potassium. That's all we're going to talk about. And yes, both of them are positively charged, right? So how does the inside get to be negative? The thing is that it's only negative relative to the outside. Let me give you an example. If I add up all the sodiums, and there's more than sodium potassium inside and outside of cells, but let's, let's just try and simplify it. Okay? If I add up all the sodiums and the potassiums and all of their positive charges on the outside, and there are 50, and then I count all the sodium and potassiums on the inside, and there are 30. Then when you compare the 50 to the 30, the inside is negative. Okay? So when, when we're talking about this, it's called the potential, called the potential across the membrane. When we're talking about the potential across the membrane, we're talking, if I had a little detector here that could say 30, and a little detector here that could say 50, and it would say, com compared to the outside, the inside is minus 20, okay? So please don't think any more about the positives and the, and the negatives so much because we're just going to be taking on faith that the inside is negative relative to the outside and that the reason that that happens is because of the un uneven distribution of positive charge. There are more negatively charged things inside of the cell too, but they aren't moved around in the neurophysiology story that we've got, right? So the outside is positive, the inside is negative. The outside has got lots of, sorry, lots of sodium and lots of sodium and not very much potassium. The inside has got lots of potassium, not very much sodium. But if altogether I added up all of these, there's more positive charges outside than there are inside, right? So here's the thing. Let's think about facilitated diffusion. I started off this series of lectures with reminding you of what facilitated diffusion and active transport are and that was not for nothing. Right now, if sodium wanted to, could it come into the cell? No, because there's a phospholipid bilayer there and the phospholipid bilayer will not allow any charged molecules to go across it, okay? But does sodium want to come in the cell? Yes, because the concentration is inward. Does potassium want to leave the cell? Yes because the concentration gradient is outward, right? So if we opened a facilitated diffusion channel 
a special protein that sits in the, mel- in the membrane. If we did open up a facilitated diffusion channel that let sodium go through, what would happen? Sodium would come rushing into the cell. Okay. Let's talk a little bit more about these channels. These are not all of the channels that were, well, they are all the channels, but they're not all the proteins that we're talking about. Keep in mind that we are looking at the phospholipid bilayer, right? Phospholipid bilayer. And all of these things, the blue guy here, the purple guy here, the red guy here, the yellow guy here, all of those things, those are all proteins that span the membrane and they act as channels, little tunnels for, in this case, potassium or sodium or calcium to grow acro- go across, all right? So it doesn't matter which one, but um, they are individual channels. Um, we're going to talk about these different guys. We're, we're actually not gonna talk about the mechanical stimulus one in this um, lecture, but we will be talking about leakage channels, ligand-gated channels, and voltage-gated channels. First of all, let's break down the words, these words. Let's go back a little bit, okay? Where, Where am I? There I am, okay? Let's do ligand gated channel. Starting with channel, a channel is a protein that goes through the phospholipid bilayer and will allow something to move by uh, facilitated diffusion, will allow something to go through the tunnel according to its concentration gradient. So glucose transport proteins could, okay, technically they're not channels, but they're very much like channels. They allow something to go through by uh, constant by facilitated fusion according to the concentration gradient channel. Okay, what is a gated channel? Because I've got two different kinds of gated channels here, right? Voltage gated channels and ligand gated channels. Okay, a gated channel. A gated channel is a protein that has a gate. And that means that if the gate is open, things can go through, but if the gate shuts, nothing goes through. That's all it means. What about the rest of the term, voltage gated? Voltage gated means the gate opens when the electricity is there. What does ligand gated mean? Ligand gated means the gate opens when the proper neurotransmitter, neurotransmitter, uh oh, I'm gonna run out of room. I apologize. When the right neurotransmitter attaches itself to the gate. Okay? Let's look at this here. Okay. So here is a voltage gated channel. A voltage gated channel. Here you can see that the gate is shut. And when the electricity across the membrane is right, that opens the gate. And when the gate is opened, then things can go through. A voltage gated sodium channel, when the voltage is right, the gate opens and sodium can go through. A voltage gated potassium channel, when the voltage is right, the gate opens and sodium can go through. Okay, let's do ligand-gated channels. Ligand-gated channel will open when the proper neurotransmitter, I'm gonna try again, neurotransmitter, when the right neurotransmitter binds to the, the protein. So here we have got, I don't know what's opening it, but it's this little pyramid thing. And when the little pyramid thing, that's gonna represent the neurotransmitter, when it binds to our channel, then it opens the gate and the uh, ions can go through. Oh, they're using acetylcholine as their neurotransmitter, okay? Now again, 
the, the channel does not care which direction this sodium or whatever is moving in. It just opens up. And then the sodium or the potassium is only going to move in the direction of its concentration gradient. So if there's more of it on the outside than on the inside, it'll go in. If there's more of it on the inside than the outside, it'll go out. That's, that's no, they don't care, right? Now, we also have got potassium leakage channels. And potassium leakage channels, they're channels, but they don't really have a gate. They just kind of randomly, every so often, let an ion use the channel. And that's why they're called leakage channels. They don't really fully open and they're never fully shut. They just kind of leak a little bit. Right? We will start here at the beginning of our next video.